This movie tells the budding friendship between 18-year-old Rachel and her dad's new employee, Amy, who is staying at their guest house for a few days. Rachel comes home after spending the night with her boyfriend, Jason, who dumped her because they are both going to college and he wants them both to grow as a person. Rachel hits him in the face, gets out of his car, and throws his phone away without him noticing. Honestly, I bet Jason is just excited to sleep with college girls. Rachel gets an earful from her dad, Frank, for always staying out all night. He's going on an out-of-town trip for the weekend and says she's grounded while he's gone. She's not allowed to leave home after 9 in the evening. He also tells her about a new employee who will be staying at the guest house until she gets settled. The next morning, Rachel wakes up to someone ringing the doorbell, it's Amy, the new employee. Rachel shows her the guest house, and the two hit it off right away. Rachel even plays the piano for Amy. She plays an original for her, which isn't finished yet. Amy compliments the guest house, and Rachel tells her it used to be her late mother's art studio, which got renovated after she passed away due to cancer. Later that day, Rachel watches an old Christmas video with her late mom and gets emotional. While Rachel is watching a random movie later, Amy knocks on her door, asking her if she can borrow a towel and shampoo. And while Rachel is grabbing the stuff, Amy hears her phone ringing, so she goes back to the guest house to answer it. Rachel has to follow her to bring her the stuff she borrowed. Rachel stays at the guest house to chit-chat with Amy. Amy keeps the door to the shower ajar so they can keep talking while she takes a bath. They talk about anything, the places Rachel has been to, her age, and why she and her ex-boyfriend broke up. Amy agrees with Rachel's ex-boyfriend, saying that long-distance relationships don't work. Rachel, however, disagrees, saying that when you love someone, it doesn't matter where you're at. They never leave your heart. Later that night, Rachel and Amy share a bottle of expensive wine. They toast to new beginnings and new friendships. Frank calls to check on Rachel and Amy. He also tells Rachel to open a bottle of wine for Amy, show her around town, and let her use his car. Rachel accidentally spills wine on Amy's shirt so she lets her borrow her own shirt. Rachel also tells Amy that she feels like she's her new best friend. Rachel also receives a call from Jason asking her if she took his phone. Rachel, of course, denies. Rachel asks Amy if she had ever been in love and Amy says no. Although she admits to sleeping around, she says it never gets personal. Amy says she likes to feel powerful and love will only make you feel weak. Later that night, Amy catches Rachel watching a lesbian adult movies, while she gives herself the five-finger excitement. The next day, Rachel wakes Amy up early in the morning so she can show her around the city. They check out shops, and Rachel buys matching sunglasses for both of them with the money her dad left her. Rachel is bringing a camcorder with her, and they are documenting their day, just talking about some random stuff. They are also talking about their dreams, with Amy wanting to be powerful and be a mogul or something, and Rachel wanting to sing all over the world and be crazy. Rachel shares that she used to write songs about her mom. And if ever she will write songs again, she wants to write about love and happiness. The two spend the day going around the city and having so much fun. They also go for a drive around Beverly Hills and then head to the beach after. They do so many fun things together like biking around the beach, dancing along to a busker's music, and going on a ferris wheel ride. And while they are on top of the world, they start talking about more serious and personal stuff. And then Amy makes a sudden confession, admitting that she is a little weirded out that she finds Rachel kind of cute. When they get home, Rachel offers to give Amy a massage since she is feeling a little stiff because of their adventure-filled day. Feeling a little stiff myself. Rachel suddenly kisses Amy. One thing leads to another, and they end up sleeping together that night. On the next day, Rachel wakes up early to prepare breakfast for the two of them. She then brings Amy her breakfast in bed. Amy wakes up and finds the surprise really sweet. She tells Rachel that although last night was great, she doesn't think it can happen again. She finds Rachel amazing, but she works for her dad. Rachel says her dad has nothing on his employee's personal life. But Amy insists that she can't date Rachel. Rachel asks Amy if she feels dirty and naughty and Amy says yes. Rachel then suggests that they wash away her sins. They take a shower together and end up getting intimate again. While dressing up after, Rachel sees a photo of her mom and her. She tells her mom that at least she's happy. They later have another serious conversation over cups of coffee. Rachel points out the fact that her mom likes her coffee with sugar and creamer, just how Amy likes hers. 
Amy asks her if she misses her mom, and Rachel responds that she feels her mom is always with her, in her paintings, in the art room. Amy then says she's wondering what Rachel was like before her mom died, and Rachel responds that she wasn't much different than she is at the moment, just more of the cheerleader than she used to be. Amy then asks Rachel what she wants to do for the day, and Rachel asks her back the question since Amy is the one who is new in town. Amy says she just wants to spend the day with Rachel. They start doing a movie marathon while having more of their getting to know you conversation. Rachel shares that she is going into business school as what her father wanted. She says she wanted to make him happy. She is the only person he has left, and she doesn't want to hurt him in any way. Amy says pleasing others won't really make her feel better. And she is talking from experience. Amy later admits to never having smoked pot before. Not even once. And so that's what they do after, smoke together in the jacuzzi. Rachel says she finds it funny that she is teaching Amy a lot of stuff when Amy is older than her. Amy says Rachel basically turned her world upside down. Rachel asks Amy what she wants for herself later in life, and Amy says she wants money. She wants to get rich. Rachel asks her how she is going to do that, and Amy vaguely mentions Frank. Rachel asks what it has to do with her dad. Amy says nothing. Rachel also mentions wanting to pursue arts with her music. She says she likes the thought of connecting with people through her songs. While they are enjoying each other's company, Jason barges in, looking for his cell phone. He also asks who Amy is, and Rachel says she is her girlfriend. Both girls then send him away. Jason leaves after snatching his pipe back. Even later that night, they go out and head to a bar to listen to performers. They also go to meet the performer backstage after the show, where Rachel asks her for any advice as an aspiring songwriter. On their way home, Amy tells Rachel that this is the best weekend of her life, and that is all because of Rachel, for her courage to pursue her passion. They swing by a tattoo shop and make an impulsive decision to get matching tattoos. They want a matching heart and key locket. Rachel gets the key while Amy gets the locket. That night, while Amy is soundly sleeping by her side, Rachel gets out of bed and goes to the piano. With only candles illuminating the dark room, Rachel starts playing the piece she has been working on for a while now while looking at her mom's photos. Amy wakes up to Rachel playing the piano while singing along with it. She also gets out of bed to approach the younger. The next morning, Frank comes home. He prepares breakfast and brings it to the guest house to surprise Amy, only to get surprised himself, finding his daughter sleeping with Amy. They have a heated confrontation, and Rachel learns that there was something going on between Amy and her dad. But Amy says what's between them is a one-time thing and she is in love with Rachel. Frank gets so mad and sends Amy out of his house. Rachel can't believe what she has just learned. Amy says sorry and tries to explain what happened between her and Frank. But she clarifies that what happened between them was a one-time thing, a mistake. Amy hadn't heard from Frank after that night until just recently when he offered her a job. He also told her that what happened between them had nothing to do with his offer. Amy says sorry, but Rachel says she should have told her. Rachel says she loved her, but she can't do this. She says sorry and leaves. Amy has a breakdown when Rachel leaves. Weeks after, or probably months, Rachel is performing in a small bar, in front of some audience. After her number, she goes out of the bar feeling ecstatic and free when she suddenly sees Amy waiting for her. Rachel approaches her. Amy tells her it was a great show. Rachel says she should have seen her Halloween show because it was better. Rachel says she did. Rachel asks her why she didn't say hi, and Amy says she didn't think Rachel wanted to see her. Rachel also compliments Amy's new blonde hair, and Amy says Rachel inspired her and changed her. Rachel tells her that breaking up with Amy was one of the worst experiences of her life. But it was also one of the best. She says pursuing her real passion, which is music, wouldn't be possible without Amy. Amy asks if they can be friends again, but Rachel says they can't just be friends. She says it's hard to transition from what they were to being just friends. Rachel asks Amy if she wants them to be just friends. Amy then grabs Rachel's face, and they start kissing. Rachel says she has an apartment around the corner and asks Amy if she wants to come with her. Amy says she'll go wherever she wants. What an odd ending. Could you ever be with someone knowing that your own father slept with that person? I don't know if I could do it. It would almost feel incestuous. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.